Hey everybody, it's Chris Kirkpatrick with Life 180 and I'm here with Caleb Williams, the CEO of Better Wealth and uh, wanted to do this special video because meet Kevin, am I allowed to say that? I, I think so. I think so. <laughs> anyway, um, I know he has a name trademark. So what I'm going to do just, just for safety is I'm going to put the link to the video that meet Kevin did um, on YouTube about infinite banking. Um, he did it a couple days ago and the reason we wanted to come on here is because, uh, well, first of all, we love Kevin. Um, I've been following Kevin for actually since before he became mm. kind of YouTube famous. Mm. Um, one of the things is my wife is a real estate agent and um, she's been following his training uh, for real estate stuff back when he had like 20,000 subscribers on wow. YouTube. So yeah. like we've been watching Kevin videos for a long time. And, and so it's been really cool to see him kind of build his following. It's been inspirational. Like how he's done it has been amazing. Um, and with, with this specific video, it was kind of one of those circumstances where it just felt a little off and I get it. Like the infinite banking concept is confusing, you know, based on what he was saying in the video, he went on clubhouse. He heard a lot of people talking about it, um, about this concept called infinite banking. And so what he wanted to do was get a, life insurance expert on, on the, uh, you know, on the channel to interview and have a real conversation about, uh, what was infinite mm -hmm. banking. So what he did was he brought this guy, Jamie on, who is the CEO of ladder life. Ladder life is a term insurance company, you know? So it kind of, well, it's, it's kind of one of those circumstances where if you're the CEO of a term insurance company, infinite banking is a, typically traditionally done with a whole life product, there's going to be a big conflict of yeah. interest there. And, and if you look through the comments in his video, it was very obvious. Everybody's like, this is just a sales pitch for term insurance. And, and you know, this guy obviously doesn't really know all the things he needs to know about this, but what I want to do and what Caleb and I are going to cover in this video is where did they get it right? Where did they get it kind of wrong? How can we help give clarity? And ultimately, Kevin, if you're watching this, we would love to be able to connect with you. And I'm, I know you mentioned on there, you want to get some infinite banking, you know, people, you'd be open to possibly having somebody on your channel. Let just have this kind of be known that we're welcome to come on there. Caleb has actually written an amazing book. Where did that go? I'm going to do this. Caleb has actually written this amazing book called the and asset. And it's all about essentially, the infinite banking concept. It's what this does. Uh, one of the things and I'm, I'm going to start with this. One of the things that Jamie said in the video with Kevin was the fact that this is confusing, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the infinite banking concept, it, it gets more confusing and agents make yeah. it more confusing than it needs to be. Right. 100%. And one of the things that you did in your book is you simplified it. Yeah, right. I simplified it because I needed to understand it and mm -hmm. at the end of the day I think a lot of people um, don't understand what they're doing. Yeah, and so they're going and making it super complicated and and that's why we get That's why we get videos with a lot of confusion. It's just like people don't they, they know that there's something there They know that a lot of people are using it. They just don't know how it works. Yeah, and so Let's start from here. I want to go through. I actually, I, I took some notes. I went through and I studied this video and there were there and, and I went through all the points that were good, were bad, were like whatever that maybe, um, I thought were important to highlight. Um, one of the, one of the things that I, I think is important to say, like I get why Kevin had this guy on. I don't know what the relationship is, but I know Kevin's model. I know he, is, is a massive YouTuber. He's got a lot of followers. He probably has sponsorship. He has a, he makes money through affiliates. Like I am not begrudging him at all for any of that, because if I were him, I'd be doing the same thing. Like I get it. Um, the challenge is, is the perspective that was given on the whole life in how whole life insurance works. Jamie sits here and, I, and I'm, I'm going to read this cause I, I want to make sure I get my words right. Lots of fees. There are lots of fees in whole life because they're sold through an expensive distribution network at about three minutes and five seconds in the video. He said that. So what that, first of all, it's not true. Like, I mean, whole life is typically sold through a distribution network of agents of, of a financial representative working with you. And, but this was ultimately kind of a back right. backdoor way of saying, well, ladder life is an online platform that, 
uh, you know, there are no agents, you know, we use technology, therefore there's going to be less costs. Well, if you go look at Ladder Life, they have access to the same companies that, you know, okay. if you were... Yeah, it's, it's, it goes back to the whole buy term and invest a difference. We're focused on whole life insurance yeah. as an expense, as a cost, mm -hmm. and not understanding the benefits of overfunding, mm -hmm. not understanding that the benefits of life insurance and decreasing the death benefit and maximizing the cash. So, um, the, you know, in, in this guy's defense, Jamie, um, the CEO of, of Ladder Life, He's, if you're, if you're using whole life insurance to protect your need for death benefit, it very well could be, I mean, he, he made comments where it takes forever for there to be cash and, um, it doesn't make sense to, it's not really liquid. Yeah. That is actually a true statement for typical whole. poor designed par whole life with no, with no divot, no paid up additions and all that. And mm -hmm. so the, I think the big disconnect is I think we're all in agreement. If you need a death benefit need, um, term insurance may be the most effective and efficient way to do that. Um, but, uh, if you're doing infinite banking or overfunded, overfunded life insurance or what I call yeah. the end asset, you're going to, you're going to take that contract and max fund it. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, Chris, it's like dramatically different and yep. it just perform performs different. And it's nothing like what was perceived in, in the video with, uh, Kevin and, and Jamie. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely. And so, so with that said, like one, one of the things that he got right was along the lines of the confusion and all these things, one of the things that agents go out there and kind of misrepresent what infinite banking is, is they say that one of the benefits is you can build up cash value, take a loan against the cash value. A lot of agents even get that wrong. They, they say, say you take, take a loan from your cash value. No, you. one of the things that, that Jamie actually got really dialed in was you are paying that interest back to the insurance company. When you take a loan, you're not taking it from the policy, you're taking it against the policy. So you are paying that money back to the insurance company. And what I want to commend him for sharing and, and getting right is you cannot earn money by paying yourself more interest through these things. That's one of the things that infinite banking practitioners get wrong all the time. And uh, it's ma well, it's massively misrepresented in many, many ways, wouldn't you say? Yep. And so, so I think that's awesome. But more importantly, like the biggest, the, I, the thing that I took out of this that really stuck out to me was, and it, it really speaks to the, the and component of everything is that Kevin and Jamie were having an either or conversations, right? Right. And, and, and so there was a lot of talk, like. One of the things he said in here, um, you know, after he was talking about it was going to take 20 years um, for the payments to equal the cash value, um, he was he, he kind of pivoted at that point in time and got into the fact that, well, rather than saving here, you should take that money, the buy term and invest the difference, put it into real estate, put it over here, put it over here. But if he understood that you don't need to wait a long time to get access to your cash, if he understood that you can actually, especially if you have like the ability to front load money and dump it in and, and if you structure the policy properly, you can have significant liquidity mm -hmm. year, at, like literally at the end of year one. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, it, there's variables that go into that. And, and so everybody's a little bit different, but it's way better. Everybody has the potential to do way better than how he described it. Everybody. Yeah. Right. Like. So, so then it comes down to the and conversation. If you want to get real estate, I think the ironic thing is for me personally, like I, I've been saying for working with people on how to do this for real estate for a long time. And so for him to use that example of, you know, rather than put money yeah. and invest it in your policy, yeah. invest it in real estate and let it grow there more effectively. Well, what if I could show you a way you could have your cake and eat it too. You could have both, right? That's what we're talking about. And from that angle, that's, I guess, out of everything in the video, that was the most frustrating part to me. Yeah, it's, it was very much of, again, it goes back to the buy-term invest difference. Mm -hmm. Most things that are anti anything life insurance are, you should do this and invest in this because yeah. life insurance in itself is a bad investment. Well, life yep. insurance is not an investment at all. And, and by, to be yeah. totally frank, if I had to choose between a life insurance rate of return or real estate or business and all that, I would choose the business of real estate. So I, we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. It's just, 
I understand the efficiency of, of using it together. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the and asset is properly named because I think it's as a foundational yep. asset enhances the real estate and your investments, not just now, but it, it, it really unlocks it for the future retirement income distributions and all these things that I love talking about. But yeah. it's like, that's, the, that's really the conversation that needs to be understood. If we don't understand the and component, I 100% agree with what they're saying mm -hmm. because it's either this or that. Mm -hmm. But if you can eliminate the uh, the or and you don't have to choose anymore, then that's where it becomes a really powerful conversation. 100%. And I and I think what I what I would encourage anybody to do, we I mean we've done a lot of videos on this topic yeah. in general, right? And so if, if if you watch that video, maybe you're kind of curious, maybe maybe you just happen to like stumble on this and this is showing up in your suggested feed or something of that nature. The bottom line is do your research, do your due diligence. You can, it's like anything else out there on the internet. You can Google infinite banking strategy. You can Google, you know, is this right for me or, or whatever. And you're going to find the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. There's, everybody's got an opinion about it. And what I, the, the one thing I can tell you, and, and this is, and Caleb just touched on this. It is not an investment, and I just want to hammer that point home. Yeah. Utilizing life insurance, a, a whole life, a properly structured whole life policy, which by the way, they never discussed once in this entire video. Everything that they talked about with infinite banking in this video with Kevin and Jamie was talking about the concept of infinite banking, but then the utilization of a traditional structure of an inefficient whole life contract, the type of contract that people like Dave Ramsey and Susie Ormans of the world hate, which I get, and I've done a lot of videos on that as well, right? And so like, if, if, if anybody were to come at it from that perspective, yeah, they would, it doesn't make any sense, right? You know, because if you look at it, A, as an investment, it's not an investment. And so you, you can't, you can't, well, first of all, how do we, how do we come up with that conclusion? What is an investment? You have to take into consideration the risks, right? You have to take in con into consideration there are no guarantees. You know, a whole life policy is going to have much less risk, much more guarantees, right? Much better guarantees. And the one part about it that was also inaccurate that he was talking about is how illiquid it is and how hard to get your money it is. You yeah. do this every day with clients. Yeah. Talk to talk to us about. Kind of how I how mean, off those statements were. Typical typical whole life. Um, I, I wouldn't say it takes twenty years to break even, but I think I would say typical whole life insurance. If you just go and get a random design, could could take up to fifteen years to break even. Mm -hmm. But there's we have this little word called overfund, and when you <laughs> overfund, that's essentially what you're saying is I'm gonna decrease the death benefit as much as possible and increase the living benefits. Mm -hmm as much as I can in that ratio and it's it's different for each person but ratio means that you're putting a, a ton of cash in and mm -hmm. getting the least amount of insurance but it still needs to be insurance to make it tax free mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of creative strategies we we love front loading policies I, I'm a huge fan of that um, but I mean in many cases you can see anywhere from 60 to 90 90 percent of cash in the first year yeah and if you're if you've ever seen a typical life insurance illustration that might be crazy to you mm. but that's like that's what we're talking about is we're we're seeing contracts break even in years instead of 20 years and it's and sometimes so, year three or four yeah they'll, they'll break even yeah and, and and the point is again that's a metric that kind of matters but doesn't really matter right. because we have to look at every decision we make has a long-term impact on our money mm -hmm. and on, on our life and a short term and i think the and asset the only negative thing in the end asset is, or there's two, is number one, you have to you have to get take a health test. Mm -hmm. You have to you actually it is life insurance. So if you're super unhealthy, we will have to get creative about how that works. Yep. And then and then the second thing is you don't have dollar for dollar access to your money in the first year. No matter how much you overfund, <laughs> right, right. there is that little gap in the first couple of years. And so what what we show our clients is is that little gap is that worth. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of benefit. And, mm -hmm. and you can make that decision. I mean, for right. some people, it's not. For a majority of people, they say, I would 100% wow. take a little bit of a haircut on the front end for all the benefits. Um, and we're not even mentioning the legacy benefit, but all the benefits sure. on the back end. And so that's, those are the kind of conversations we have at Better Wealth. Yeah, no, and, and that's why I love doing this with you. And so I don't wanna, I don't wanna just, 
go too crazy on this and beat it to death. But the bottom line is these were kind of the points that stuck out that, that I thought were important for everybody to understand in the, in the context that it isn't as hard to get the money. It, well, actually, I don't want to end with that. So <laughs> with what you just said, with what you just yeah. said, um, it didn't kind of complete the thought that I had going on in my head before that. So how hard is it to get your money? He was in Jamie, Jamie was talking in the video. If yeah. you want to get your money out, it's hard. And there are tax consequences potentially for getting your money out, okay. which can be true if yeah. you do it improperly and you're not yeah. trained and you go yeah. about it the wrong way. So talk about how, if you have money in there, not just how long does it take to build up, yeah. but how hard is it to access it when yeah. you have it? And what are the kind of consequences yeah. tax wise? Every, every company is different, mm -hmm. but the, the, probably the best, most efficient way for most people. And again, I can't give investment advice. Sure. I can't give insurance, insurance advice. Um, but the, probably the best way is to take a policy loan. And we, we have a very, um, negative, um, view of loans, but essentially it's just a, your money is collateralized, which is a fancy way of saying your money is continuing to grow in the policy. You're taking a policy loan, which means it's that relationship between you and the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Your cash value acts as a collateral. And then you pay that um, loan principal and interest on your terms back to the insurance company. And when you do that, more of your cash value becomes available. It's kind of like a home equity if people mm -hmm. do velocity banking, they'll understand that concept. And so if you do that, um, a loan is not considered income and, it, and therefore it's not taxable. Now there's a lot of debate. I'm not again. I won't comment on this, but there are some people that are that do loans for business purposes, and they say that you can write off the interest mm -hmm. um, if it's for a business activity. Talk to your CPA. I think a third party lending makes it even cleaner. Um, but th those are those are things that we've seen that even make it even more advantageous than not, it not being income. As far as how quickly you can get your money, we've seen it as quick as a few days. What we like to tell our clients is five. Five to seven business days are like a really safe call, mm -hmm. and in most cases they're they're quicker. So this is not this is not like you have your money tomorrow. Right, it's not like as liquid as a pure savings account. But it's bank. it could be as simple as clicking a button, going on an app, making a phone call. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's so it's it's like it very much you can get your money with with easily within two weeks. Um, and and in most cases we're we're talking five business days. Yeah. But again, I we we have a culture of like. Yeah. I don't want people to do something and leverage every penny and need it that day. Like that's not the, that's, that's not, not the kind of culture that we have. Right. Um, and, and it's so good that you don't need to like over promise in other areas. Yeah, no. And, and the bottom line is this isn't, this isn't the place that you want to keep all of your money. If you need instant access to it anyway, this is part of, this is part of a system, right? It's a financial system that helps you kind of run all your financial decisions through, right? Whether it's, you know, figuring out how to structure what you need for your rainy day or savings, you know, savings emergency fund. Yep. This can be part of it once you hit a certain stage for sure, because it's, an, it's, a, it's a super efficient place to keep your money. Um, but then major capital purchases, decisions that you have that go through this investments in your company. If you are um, somebody like Kevin, um, who I know day trades a ton, this is a great place to kind of help keep capital to be able to access, use as uh, like almost a, your own personal line of credit. I think that's, that's a big component. You get to be your own banker, so to speak in that context. And rather than just investing cash and having it, you know, burn essentially and interrupt the compounding by potentially losing it, you get to have it working for you in the policy. I'll, I'll say this just to kind of, cause they touched on it a little bit in the video when they were talking about how policy loans work. When you, when you take a loan against your policy, you're taking a loan from the insurance company. They, basically, when you have cash value in your policy, contractually, the insurance company says, we will give you a certain percentage, we guarantee to give you a loan for a certain percentage of the cash value that you have in your policy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, very simply put, right? And so, when they give you that loan, they're gonna charge you interest, anywhere between four and 8%, yep. right? And so between four and 8%, you're going to have to pay them. Now, let's say it's 5% that you're paying the insurance company. If you're taking a loan against the policy, the thing to understand is while they're not going to keep lending you more money than you have in your account 
for your life insurance contract? That is the case. However, if you took a $100,000 loan against your policy, that's what the insurance co company gave you and you're paying 5% on that, and you have 110,000 mm -hmm. in your account, all 110,000, including the $100,000 loan that you took against it, that all of that is earning whatever the dividend rate is. Yes, on a non-direct recognition company, meaning the company doesn't directly recognize the loan, sure. you get 100% of the dividend credit. Whatever that is. Which is easy to look at because we can just run an IRR calculation. Mm -hmm. On a non-direct recognition company, it's a little bit trickier because you have to factor in the the activity that yep. the loan does to the yep. crediting rate. But the point, the point is, your cash is in your cash value. It's going to continue to grow whether you borrow against that or not. Mm -hmm. And that's what's valuable too because if we use the language that some people use is borrow from, pay yourself back interest, yeah, it actually it doesn't make a ton of sense. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, it's not mathematically, accurate. yeah, mathematically yeah. it just doesn't work. It's not accurate. And it's, that's when, when I talk about it being misrepresented, that's, that's like probably the number one area that is misrepresented. So, so just, just kind of know that, 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 element of it, being able to keep your money working for you. If you want to day trade, if you want to buy real estate, if you want to invest in flipping cars, like I know some people, like I have some people that have done, it's, it's a function of when you can take that money to put a hundred thousand dollars into a brokerage account to day trade and still have that money compounding kind of on the side. And then when you do well and you start building your account up, yep. you pay the loan back to the insurance company, not to yourself, not to make more money there. But when you pay the money back to the insurance company, let's say it took a couple years to do so or like whatever, yeah. that money, yes, you're going to have an interest expense, but the money on the side account in your life insurance contract will never have stopped growing. It's going to be much bigger by the time you get to that point. That is the concept. Like that is the principle. And that was not talked about at all Yeah. because I don't think he understood it, honestly, I don't right? know. Or, yeah. but whatever. Yeah. But, um, so that's it. If you have any questions, reach out. I mean, Comment I'll, below. Comment below. Like, happy to answer and address any comments. Kevin, if you're watching this, reach out. We'd love to talk to you. Like I said, he's got this book. If you want a copy of the book, we'll send you a copy of the book. Um, but feel free to reach out. We'd love to get on your channel. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to have you on this channel and uh, have a conversation about it. And uh, that's it. So, guys, I hope this served you. I hope it helped uh, in some way, give more clarity as to kind of how this strategy works. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to put a link down below in the description, click on it, set up a time to talk. Happy to talk to you. Happy to help serve in any way possible. Till next time, have a blessed inspirational day. We'll see you then.